Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update. It is the Earthmaster here on this finally Friday, March 1st, 2024, 11.55 a.m. here. California time, uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe. See what we got for latest movement here. Looks like a 3.3. Uh, down in South America in the red flag and also a 2.0 coming in there uh, to the area of the big island of Hawaii. So live stream is currently down. I will bring that up here soon. Getting some windy conditions out here and I'm going to show you guys why. We've got a major winter storm coming in here. Look at that. A uh, beauty of a low pressure system here. And this is developing further, deepening all this convection and cold air. Going to be slamming in here to Oregon washington and northern california as well uh already got uh, some high winds out here so that is affecting some of the electricity out here getting a little bit of flickering going on and every time it flickers out here well the stream goes down so it looks like it went down this morning i will bring it back here later this afternoon but we do have a lot of weather here to deal with including a blizzard warning which is currently in effect here well, from uh, roughly about uh, now to early Sunday, blizzard conditions through Saturday here, actually. So there's a couple different time zones here, but we're looking at 5 to 10 feet above 5,000 feet there. That's snow. That's a lot of snow falling down there. Snowfall rates expected between 2 to 5 inches per hour. Imagine that heavy snow coming down along with 75 mile per hour wind gust. So right now... Uh, uh, and not a good time to go up there. I want to show you guys the uh, camera out here, the Caltrans camera. This is I-80 over Donner Summit. Uh, this is nothing yet. Um, a little bit later, there's actually a couple brave souls out there trying to uh, uh, make it over the mountain. Not uh, advisable, that's for sure. Definitely want to be caught up there over the summit or any areas in the mountains uh, this weekend. Uh, mostly tonight and tomorrow um, very dangerous driving conditions as you can see a lot of wind blowing up there right now uh, snow but that's nothing yet again imagine five to ten feet up here across the area it's almost impossible impossible unless you got a, a, a dozer or something to plow through the snow uh, so yeah that's going to be expected here um, tonight and tomorrow the national weather service current map out here does show some snow uh, the heavier stuff, of course, is coming in tonight. Wind gusts up around the Donner Summit area. You've seen that camera shaking. Looks like about 56 miles per hour or so. Uh, wind gusts being reported there. Uh, this will only increase and intensify throughout the night. Blizzard conditions, again, uh, will be uh, associated with this massive, just a huge, massive storm. A lot of instability. Notice this uh, lightning out here. These green flashes. Uh, a lot of colder air. That could have enhanced some uh, thunderstorm activity out here today uh, in the Northern California area as well. So if you are out here, I know this map right here shows uh, maybe blizzard conditions down to Grass Valley and, and lower, but I think they kind of messed up a little bit here as far as the uh, weather.gov app goes. Um, not going to see blizzard conditions in Auburn or Jackson, although they will probably get some snow down to about 2,000 feet. Nothing like what we're seeing above 5,000 feet, though. We're, we're expecting 5 to 10 feet of snow. Goodness. Uh, so, right now in the Sacramento Valley, we're underneath a wind advisory, and it's going to be windy, but nothing like up in the mountains there with all that blowing snow. A winter storm warning over here across the coast range. That uh, means they're going to be getting some decent snow as well. So we could use a little bit more snow over here across the coast range. Not a whole lot right now. And uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a lot of snow. Precipitation-wise, liquid precipitation here in the valley, we're just going to get a little bit of wind, you know, and, and, some, and some showers. But we're really, really not expecting any major flooding concerns out here. This is a big storm for the mountains because of the cold air and the associated um, moisture content with it but it's coming down from the wrong direction here to affect the valleys here in terms of well precipitation so light precipitation here all across sacramento and the san joaquin valley heavy duty snow uh, up into the um the sierra nevada mountains we're talking about maybe 10 or higher uh, in the feet range um, so it'd be interesting to see how much these guys receive after it's all said and done uh, either way, travel is highly um, discouraged, right? We don't want to encourage people to go traveling out here. 
because uh, things can happen. You can get buried out there in the snow, you know, four inches an hour. Uh, not good news. Definitely not good. Uh, so, there's the uh, other current radar. I want to back out here and show you guys the uh, wind gust out here associated with this. This is uh, currently right now between, uh, you know, 1 to uh, Friday the 1st at 12 p.m. Look at this. Deepening low pressure system right here. All going to be funneling into California as we head in. As we head into the night, about 5 o'clock this afternoon, some wind gusts up here, you know, they're stating about 75 miles per hour or so. Some of these areas around the peaks should see uh, uh, those predicted forecasts there for the wind speeds. Look at that, 71 miles an hour. I'm telling you, tonight is going to be a night, if, you, or if you're up there, hunker down, you know, um, break out some board games or something, because it's going to be a very windy night up there in the mountains. And uh, here for the Sacramento Valley, uh, windy as well. Uh, I will bring the string stream back up here a little bit later this afternoon and hope that it will stay up. If not, uh, well, I'll just deal with it and uh, we'll go from there. But tonight, early tomorrow morning, things calming down here across Sacramento Valley in terms of the um, the wind out here. But it's still going to be quite windy up into the Sierra Nevada mountains, along with that cold temperature. Cold temperatures up there. Goodness. All right. So Storm Prediction Center out here does have a thunderstorm threat across a good portion of the West Coast, including Northern California. Uh, so just a heads up there for uh, potential thunderstorm activity, not anything severe expected. And that looks to be the case here for tomorrow as well with a little threat of thunderstorm activity. Uh, here's our thunderstorm forecast, of course, throughout the afternoon and the evening. A little bit out here off the coast of the east coast or, uh, east coast region as well all right let's jump into earthquake activity uh, actually we're going to start over here at the iceland volcano here first they did put out an updated hazard map here across the area of grindavik iceland where we've seen the last couple eruptions here take place zone three has been enhanced here uh, for some sinkholes fault movements erupted fissure activity without warning this is the main area where they believe the eruptive activity is going to take place. So zone three heads up. And this has been basically the region where we have seen uh, past eruptive activity. It shows the extent here, December, our most recent event over here. Um, back in January, we did see a little fissure activity open up here just north of Grindavik and even one right outside of town that did affect a couple houses there. Um, so keep an eye, obviously uh, this region is swelled in terms of the um, accumulation of magma we're currently in the red line right here this chart here shows you the uh, days past uh, since the beginning of the inflation and we're coming up on about 20 days or so maybe a little bit more now um, and if you look at these past little eruptions here well um, we're getting close to that time frame where we could see an eruptive event take place at any day uh, due to the uh, volume of magma that has accumulated underneath this area. And they're stating here uh, in their wording that an increased likelihood of a volcanic eruption in the coming days uh, due to the accumulation of magma below the area, looking at about 8.5 to 9 million cubic meters of magma uh, have been accumulated here beneath the Savart Singhi region. So it's been consistent even on the GPS charts here. Uh, if we look uh, for February, this is March time frame right here. Uh, up, upward is the key word. So we're, we're just about ready to see another event here take place very soon. And of course, that will be um, happening following some major earthquake activity in terms of the multitude of quakes. Uh, we are seeing a little bit out here today, a little bit south here of Grindavik or west of Grindavik as well. Uh, you know, there's always that potential that we could see some further eruptive activity take place down here as well into the town. Uh, that's not completely out of the question here. Most of the earthquake activity up around the Slingerfell region in the area that's seen the uh, most recent fissure activity open up here. Um, not a huge amount of earthquake activity yet. And uh, it's just something we need to watch here. Uh, the Live from Iceland site here is a good site to monitor for live webcams. Grindavik off here well lit up um, not a whole lot right now but uh, these you know as we've seen in the last couple eruptions here it just pops up out of the blue uh, you'll see this you know ground give way and eruptive lava 
blow through and uh, you know create that uh, beautiful lava fountain out here. Uh, we'll continue to watch that and report back on anything that changes. Again, earthquake activity is the key to watch out there uh, just prior to any eruptive movement. All right, uh, what else we got here? We did see a little activity out into the um, Owen Fracture Zone. They, they dropped this down to a 5.9. It was a six-pointer. Uh, in fact, I think the GeoNet servers reporting this as a six, or not GeoNet, but uh, EMSC model here reporting this as a 6.0. Uh, so a little bit of activity stirred up out here in this fracture zone, uh, divergent zone. Uh, looks like we did see uh, some activity previous, prior to that, 4.8. And a little activity up here off the coast of Pakistan for that 4.1. So things fairly active over here. And if we look at the earthquake 3D globe, uh, last night was quite active across Turkey and the Mediterranean. Uh, definitely looks like things may be brewing out here in the area. Uh, a lot of activity back across the Java Trench, a lot of activity over here. So we're looking at potentially the middle point region here around Nepal, uh, areas in the India. That uh, This region here is kind of sitting in between these two very active regions. Right now we do have a 2.5 coming into the area just outside of Nepal along this plate boundary. But I think it's key to watch this area, uh, key to watch in this area uh, because of the elevated movement out here on both sides of the plate boundary. A lot of clustering going on once again, Philippines southward into the Indonesia Islands area. And uh, looks like we got some further activity here in Japan. Let's see what we got going on here uh, for movement today. Looks like uh, a handful of earthquakes after midnight, 5.1 and a 4.5. Some previous activity here yesterday. Although um, this region has seen quite a bit of movement here recently in the last week with about nine earthquakes of decent magnitudes out here, fours and fives. Uh, stirring up out here off the coast of Tokyo. Uh, so very active out here. Got to keep an eye on certain regions where we're seeing all this elevated activity take place. Uh, down in New Zealand, 3.7 South Island there. It looks like it's just on the plate boundary. Very shallow earthquake. A little bit of movement there in the Kermadec Trench as well. As far as the California area goes, looks like a 2.5 coming in. Let's see what's going on out here. 2.5 up in the mountains here north of Redding, outside of Bernie, California. About 14 kilometers deep here. One little earthquake out on the Cascadia. 2.1. Of course, yesterday, remember, we had a uh, decent swarm of activity out here. Uh, well, actually, out, it was out here on the Gorda uh, Escarpment region. It does look like there's uh, some pressure building up out here across the Cascadia. Uh, with this earthquake uh, being reported 24 kilometers deep there. So it's somewhat deeper into the Cascadia subduction zone itself. Um, let's check out the trimmer from last night and see what we got. 56 epicenters here, roughly within this zone. So we know the trimmer activity adds further strain upstream. And that's why we're seeing some of that earthquake activity just up from where the trimmer takes place there, down there about 35, 45 kilometers deep. So keep an eye on this area. Um, historically, Cascadia has, has been known to produce 9.0 or greater earthquakes. 1700 was the last event, so 324 years ago. But it's also been known to create partial ruptures where uh, we only see the southern segment erupt. Uh, not erupt, but uh, uh, jolt take place. Uh, and that can be between an 8.1 to an 8.4 magnitude earthquake, unlike the 9-pointer with a full rupture out here. So... Uh, it's possible we could see just a partial rupture here of the Cascadia. Uh, it, it's been longer than uh, um, 324 years. So uh, in the regular intervals of eight pointers, you know, there could be a couple eight pointers in between full ruptures. So it's possible, you know, I think there's a higher percentage of seeing a, a partial rupture out here uh, compared to a full rupture. But we'll continue to watch that, folks. Uh, Trimmer has been acting a little crazy here recently in terms of uh, uh, the amount of trimmer counts taking place. So that may have something to do with the uh, strain building out here. It really hasn't uh, been elevated. It's just been uh, kind of lower, a lot lower than average uh, compared to years past. All right, uh, let's jump back in here, see what else we got here for California. Uh, the Bay Area looks fairly quiet today, not a whole lot going on. Southern California, typical movement, not a whole lot in the last hour. Nothing above 2.5 from today. We did have that 2.5 yesterday here, 
across this interchange at the plate boundary and the Garlock Fault and the Big Pine Fault and many other fault fractures out here yesterday. But uh, aside from that, things just look a little quiet out there in SoCal today. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot going on here. Some movement out in the area around Smith's Ferry, Idaho. This, scene, uh, this area, I did see a 4.9 out here recently. That's a lot of earthquake activity uh, or aftershock activity for a 4.9. Uh, 4.9 coming in on the 26th. Uh, so we've been getting some aftershock sequences out here. There's always a possibility we could see something bigger uh, following this movement. Uh, this area has seen some larger earthquake activity in the past. More recently, that six-pointer out here along the Sawtooth Fault System. But uh, these areas over here definitely uh, can build up enough strain over the years to uh, produce some larger quakes. A uh, quick glance here at Yellowstone National Park, just checking out these seismographs. Not a whole lot going on here. Uh, some wind events showing up there, that darker colored reading on the graph. Uh, some wind. Uh, aside from that, uh, the rest of the country out here, very minimal. Uh, aside from Texas, earthquake country out here in Texas. Quite a few oil fields getting hit out there. Puerto Rico Trench, not a whole lot going on here today. Uh, looks a little bit more active across our normal swarming area over here. I say normal because that's always swarming on any given day. Uh, it's getting a little squeeze here between the Mariotas Trough and the Puerto Rico Trench. This region sees a lot of swarming on any given day. So back to normal, it looks like there. Uh, the rest of the Earthquake 3D globe here. Uh, the Atlantic is fairly quiet out here right now. We did have some activity here a couple days ago. Um, and I, I still think we got uh, maybe a, a short time before we see further activity up there in Iceland in terms of the eruptive activity. But it could take place at any given time with the um, accumulation of magma that's been going on up there. All right, folks. So let's see what else we got. Space weather activity real quick here. And... Um, I'll get the stream back up and running here shortly. Uh, we're saying goodbye to 3590. 3590 has been the source of many X flares and the strongest X flare of the solar cycle. Uh, it is now departing the visible disk and will pretty much be out of sight here uh, by tonight's update. We're left with a couple disorganized sunspots and really not a whole lot to write home about. The solar flare threat has diminished quite uh, drastically following the departure of 3590. We do have a couple regions out here on the southeastern limb that may uh, show some uh, complexity. We'll watch that in the days ahead. Right now, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 50, X flare still at 10%, and that's probably due because uh, we're still able to see 3590 here on the uh, Earth-facing side of the sun. A little bit of prominence action down here off the south um, area of the sun, and also the eastern limb looks quite active there as well. Really not expecting too much in terms of rewards here over the next couple days. So hopefully we can get that to change here, folks. Seismograph stations there, fairly quiet. All right. Uh, again, I'll have the stream up and run in here shortly. And uh, we'll definitely get this uh, update up on the channel. We'll chat at you guys when I bring the stream back up a little bit later here this afternoon. Have a good day. Enjoy your Friday.